Hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming today. Um, International Alec Foundation presents how to develop self-initiative, self-discipline, and manage time. And first, I'll let Charlie talk about XCamp Alpha Kids and how to start a nonprofit. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Also, thank you for the other students from Harker uh, to come here to give us this talk. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm the founder of X Alpha Kids uh, four years ago. Uh, also, I'm the founder of XCamp Academy, uh, who teach students uh, coding too. Uh, in addition, also I'm the founder of International Art School Foundation uh, four years ago. Uh, at that time, my daughter Ellen, she was uh, in ninth grade. So she thought about how to help um, uh, Chinese uh, underprivileged kids. So to set up this uh, nonprofit organization, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you search online uh, how to set up and Jews in California, uh, there are about uh, kind of 14 steps. Um, in general, you, you file application, uh, you will get approved as an entity, uh, then you apply and get your ERN number, it's kind of a tax number ID. Uh, then you file another document to, to be a, a nonprofit, uh, then you get approved. After that, you, you need to apply uh, also get approved within Google so you can raise funding in Google too. Uh, I think to have a non-profit uh, uh, That's for me. Uh, big benefit is you know uh, we can have donations then we can have the the kids or other people who need the help. So in general speaking uh, if you want to do so you want to help people and you want to raise uh, funding uh, it's good it's not that hard to uh, apply and uh, get a NGO. If some of the parents here, if your kids have this kind of dream or passion, animation to help others, uh, please think about it. Also, if you have any questions, uh, you may contact me uh, or uh, some people who have this experience too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you again for coming to here. Also, our, our case is a, a Google internal uh, parenting community. Uh, we invite speakers here to share their experiences uh, with us. Hopefully, we have uh, more knowledge to raise our kids. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you for the uh, RF members to have to come here to give this talk. Back to you, Victoria. And before we get started, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about IOF. So at International Alex Foundation, we strive to utilize our resources as multicultural students to help others. Our mission is to improve the quality of education in areas that are not financially advantaged while strengthening the connection and understanding between the world's youth. In the past year, we have donated almost $9,000 worth of scholarship money, winter jackets, and educational technology to three underfunded schools in China. And pictured right here are students from Guanxi Elementary School with electronics we donated to them. None of this would be possible without our generous donors, and we're extremely grateful to each and every one of them. If you'd like to support IOF through a donation, you can do so by visiting our website, intloutlook.org. Thank you so much. And now let's kick off our presentation. Our speakers today are Clarice, Alina, Michelle, Zubin, and Jessica. We'll have a five minute Q&A session after each speaker and a general Q&A session at the end. So please ask any questions you have in the chat. And now please welcome our first speaker, Clarice. Hi everyone, can you hear me okay? Okay. I am, as Victoria said, my name is Clarice Wang and I'm a rising senior at Harker. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you a bit about my involvement in extracurricular activities and how I'm able to manage my time, stress levels, and so on. Uh, so first of all, as you can see on the slide that's being shared, uh, I've divided my activities into three general categories. Uh, the extracurriculars I participate in in school, outside of school, and then over the summer. I'm going to go over these one by one, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask during the Q&A portion after this. Okay, uh, my number one commitment is DECA. And if you haven't heard of DECA, it's a business and entrepreneurship or abbreviated BE organization that holds conferences on the regional, national, and international level for high schoolers to compete in the areas of marketing, hospitality and tourism, finance, uh, business administration, and entrepreneurship. The competitive events DECA has includes role plays and written presentations, both of which basically require impromptu speaking and some research. At Harker, 
uh, our BNE department has a student-led DECA chapter uh, that has around 200 total members, making it one of the biggest organizations on campus. And in one school year, there'll be four conferences to attend and five if you qualify for the international conference. My role in Harker DECA has grown from being just a member to the 2021-2022 co-CEO of the Harker DECA officer team overseeing all 200 of our members. So how did I get here? Going all the way back to my to the beginning of my freshman year, I was a really, really shy and reserved kid who definitely wouldn't be able to speak in front of a group of people like I am today. And because of my self-awareness of that, I wanted to involve myself in something that would force me to boost my confidence and speaking skills. Thus, in my first year of participating in DECA, I attended every single conference. I studied for my exams, practiced my role plays, and was actually able to qualify for the international conference that was held in Orlando, Florida that year. After the international conference, I decided that having felt such a big growth in confidence from DECA, I wanted to try out becoming a leader as well. So I applied for the officer team and luckily I was accepted to become the director of membership for Harker DECA. The next year, I was chosen to be the VP of operations and was placed in, in charge of three directors. And I'm now co-CEO and along with my other co-CEO, we manage everything that goes on within the chapter. Um, beyond the officer team, there's another leadership opportunity available to DECA members and that's becoming a mentor. Mentors are mostly upperclassmen DECA members who have competitive experience and they help out first year DECA members with adjusting to competitions and more. Uh, if you like me to speak more about the mentorship program, um, let me know at the end. Okay, and then lastly, on the topic of DECA, our chapter advisor has this saying that you get out what you put in, and that's exactly what DECA is like. If you want to perform well at conferences, you'd spend at least, let's say, an hour a week preparing for them. Um, but at the end of the day, there are no mandatory DECA meetings, none at all. So it's all up to you, the mentor. So that completes probably the most organized part of what I'm going to say today, but I'm now going to move on down the list to the Language and Linguistics Club. My interest in linguistics definitely stemmed from my interest in building puzzles. Ever since I was little, I loved anything that I could build or had some logic towards it. Uh, so then in my freshman year, uh, my dad introduced me to this linguistics book, linguistics book called An Introduction to Language, and I was hooked. I think as I was reading, I would like run down the stairs every time I found something really interesting to me and then run back up the stairs to continue reading. Um, now that I think about it, that's quite inefficient. I should have been reading downstairs. But uh, if you want a preview of the book, I can tell you that after reading it, you'll understand both what the word anti-disestablishmentarianism means and how many morphemes it contains. It's really interesting. Um, anyways, because of my interest in linguistics, I participated in the NACLA competition my freshman year, um, joined the linguistics club at school and sophomore year, continued to participate in the NACLA um, in the following years, and became an officer last year, and will be leading the club as president this upcoming school year. Other clubs that I participate in in school that I'm not necessarily on the leadership team of are TRIM, which is a, a society for students to involve themselves in volunteering in terms of playing at local locations such as senior homes um, in chamber groups or solo, playing music for them um, and earning volunteer hours. Um, other things I do are I'm involved in AI club and public health club. Uh, those two are kind of connected in a way because I hosted one of the public health club podcasts. Um, I interviewed Mr. Javier Amatrain and he's the founder of a company in the field um, bridging the intersection of AI and healthcare. So I thought that was a pretty interesting interview. As for sports, um, I participated in track and cross country. So cross country is a fall sport, track is a spring sport, and uh, they would both be required every single weekday after school. So around three hours after school, every single day of the weekday, uh, every single weekday, we come up to around 15 hours per week and time commitments. And then I put a little note there that cross country has a summer season. So um, your summer will be free if you want to run cross country. The next thing on the list is capoeira, which is a martial art that I've been doing more over the pandemic 
it was really hard to get out to run uh, during the pandemic with lockdown and everything. And I really enjoyed Capoeira as well. Okay, moving on. Um, outside extracurricular activities. So right now I am the co-president of this nonprofit organization called Youth AI Lab. Um, our website is youthai.org. And we aim to make AI and machine resources available to all youth um, through our website and our monthly speaker series. So we invite people to talk and uh, we have around a thousand subscribers on our YouTube channel who tune in every month. Um, the next thing I'm involved in is the Palo Alto Teen Advisory Board. So this is a teen leadership group uh, affiliated with my local community. So I live in Palo Alto. And um, last year was my first year on the board. We organize activities that helps get the teens in our city more and more engaged with uh, the community and get to know each other. And this has been really crucial over the past year because of the pandemic when we didn't even we weren't even allowed to go to school. So last year I was both, I was a member liaison, uh, liaison communicated with all other um, teen leadership groups in Palo Alto. And then I was also a secretary. And then this year I'm going to be leading the group as president. The next few things I'm going to touch upon later. So the Columbia University High School Programs and Inspire AI Fellowship Program, I'll touch on later. So I'll jump to research. Um, I've been doing research ever since my freshman year. Um, I research mostly in the field of AI and machine learning, as you could probably tell from my involvement in those uh, through my extracurricular activities. And um, I, it's been a great experience getting to know my mentor and the peers I work with and just uh, getting some research experience, which is something you can't really get unless you have like a research class you attend at school. And that commitment, for me, it's very different for every uh, person. It takes about three hours per week. Okay, and finally, for the extracurriculars, I'm going to talk about the activities I did this past summer and this current summer. So the summer after my sophomore year in high school, I, ten I attended um, both the Columbia University pre-college program. I took the course Big Data, Machine Learning, and their real world applications. And I also attended uh, Inspire AI Scholars, which is Not a program led by um, Stanford and MIT uh, students. So, both of these talked about AI, but for me, or to me, they were both really theoretical or they weren't, they didn't really get into the deep explanations of how things worked. They just gave us some machine learning models and told us this is what they do and practice training them and um, using them. Um, but still, it was a really great experience for me, uh, exposing me to all of the different fields like NLP, computer vision, all of that. Uh, at the end of the Columbia University pre-college program, um, every teacher, they write all the students a letter of evaluation. And for me, uh, the letter of evaluation somehow reached the director of the Columbia University high school programs. And they reached out to me and asked me to join the what is above the Columbia University high school programs in bash surgership. So for that, I was able to work on my marketing skills and promote the summer program with another group of students um, to my local communities. Okay. And then this summer, I'm currently in the midst of another two summer programs. So uh, this year I'm doing the UC Santa Cruz SIP program. You might've heard of, it's a research internship program. And then I'm also doing the MIT BWSI, which stands for Beaver Works Summer Institute, uh, led by instructors who work at MIT Lincoln Lab. Um, the course, I'm, or the field that I am studying in for SIP is linguistics. Um, definitely hopping off my interest in linguistics from Language and Linguistics Club. I work in a group of three and we're trying to develop an orthography for this language called Santiago La Chopa Zapotec, which is a long, long name for language, but it's spoken in sparse communities in Mexico and Santa Cruz. Um, as for the MIT program, uh, the course I'm taking is called Cogworks and we look into cognitive science and AI assistance. So this would include Siri, I don't want to activate your guys' Alexa, but Alexa's, um, Google Echo, and so on. 
um, the program is four weeks long and their first three weeks are modules. So the audio, visual and language model module. And then the final week, which I'm going into this upcoming week actually is our capstone week where we get to develop something of our own, which I'm really excited for. So that kind of wraps up all of my extracurricular activities, both uh, from in school, outside of school, and over the summer. So now I wanted to talk about generally how I became involved with all of these activities. Um, for the most part, the things I've involved myself in were really based on my own interests. Um, like for DECA, I mentioned that I wanted to boost my confidence and my, and my parents definitely supported me throughout the process. Um, but sometimes they thought I was taking on too much and they even wanted me to drop some of my activities. So including DECA. And sometimes I make decisions that aren't wise, like mostly consisting of me trying to take on way too much that I can handle. And my parents are always there to ground me whenever that happens. Uh, but at the end of the day, they always just trusted me to let me make my own decision, which I'm super grateful for, and which is why I'm able to participate in such great organizations, activities um, in my high school years. So lastly, today I'm going to end with some time management and stress tips. Um, I'm personally the type of person who has to have everything organized when it comes to time management and scheduling. Um, a lot of the activities I'm involved in require daily or weekly meetings, and I have to keep schedules of all of these meetings or else I'm definitely prone to missing or forgetting them. I set alarms on my phone. I keep a very organized Google Calendar. Um, Notes app is really useful. And reflecting at the end of the day what I did today and what I have to do tomorrow it has been really useful for me. On the topic of sleep, well, to tell the truth, it's pretty challenging to get the full recommended eight hours of sleep in high school, especially with everyone doing as much as they're doing, as you'll probably see in the following speakers. Uh, everyone's doing a lot and they're doing great. Um, I think for sleep, it's been a lot about balance and stopping when you really need to stop. Because at the end of the day, if you don't get enough sleep or if you don't sleep at all, um, it's gonna be detrimental to the work you do. So I think that's going to end off my uh, section for today. If you guys have any questions, I'm really happy to answer them. Thanks. Thank you, Clarice. So just a reminder, if you have any questions for Clarice, um, you can write them out in the chat. And if not, we can also save some questions for the general Q&A session. So I think we'll move on to our next speaker. Yeah, thank you, Victoria. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Michelle. I'm also currently a rising senior at the Harker School. And um, first, as you guys requested, I'll go over like a brief overview of the activities that I do. Um, so definitely my biggest activity is journalism. And this year, I'm the editor in chief of our student newspaper, The Wink Post. Um, and last year, I was the design editor. So I think uh, this year, the time commitment is around anywhere from five hours to like 30 hours a week, depending on um, when the deadline week is. So um, if you're interested in doing journalism, um, uh, basically the biggest time commitment is during deadline week, where it's basically where you work with all of your other editors and actually put together the paper. Um, we go through a lot of different edits and it's actually a lot of fun because you stay up really late together and um, you're working on revising articles, revising visuals, and then also page design. Um, and I think something important for journalism is, um, as Clarice mentioned in DECA, journalism is also a program where you get out of it as much as you put in. So you can choose to not put in a lot of time in journalism and just stay reporters. So and maybe you'll just write a few articles every month, um, but you can also choose to invest a lot of time in it. And then you'd be able to advance to like being an editor or editor in chief, and then you'd be responsible for maintaining basically the whole program. Um, and another activity that I do is art club. So um, this year we actually in art club had the opportunity to do a mural in Palo Alto, which uh, I put a picture of on the slide. And I really love art club since this was actually a chance to make an actual impact in the community. Since what we did was after we saw the Stop Asian Hate Movement rise in March, we actually reached out to the Palo Alto Public Art Committee and um, they gave us a $1,000 grant to paint a mural in downtown Palo Alto. Um, and this mural will be on this um, street until September. So if you want to check it out, it's on U University Avenue. 
Um, and then something else that I do is research, like Alina mentioned. Um, Parker has a program called the Near Metro Program where you can apply to receive a grant and do research under a mentor. Um, so I also applied and uh, this year I'm also a Metro Scholar for the Humanities and uh, my project is actually centered around art history and more specifically um, how the introduction of Japanese woodblock prints to Europe um, influenced the development of Japonism in Impressionist artwork, artwork and specifically um, the artwork of Mary Gassot. Uh, and outside of school, uh, I also did the Saratoga Youth Commission. So it's basically a commission that works with city council and also helps plan events for the youth in our uh, community. Uh, so last year I was the marketing chair and this year I was actually the chair of the youth commission. And it's basically, we have meetings every month and we're able to plan, um, for instance, we did a hiking challenge. Uh, we planned Kahoot night, future in politics. So I think that was also a really good learning experience because you really learn people skills. You learn how to work with other people and you also learn how to talk to city council, which was pretty cool. Um, and over the summer uh, this year, I'm doing a research internship under a professor at Stanford University, um, Dr. Luke Lee, who is a professor of art history. And his project right now is centered around the importance of hair in Renaissance Golden Age artwork. So I'm basically helping, helping him compile a database of all of the um, artworks that he mentioned in his manuscripts. And I'm also trying to create a map of all the artworks in Florence for him. Um, and something else I did this summer was a pre-college program in art history at Notre Dame University, which was really interesting since it was two weeks where we got to talk about art every single day. And we also got a lot of practice in writing summaries and research papers. So I think that was also really helpful. Um, yeah, next slide. And uh, I think most of my extracurricular activities are centered around art since that's what I really loved doing since I was a child. Um, so something else that I've been doing throughout high school is I painted a few murals in my city. Um, so on Saratoga downtown, um, I painted a telephone box and I also got the opportunity to paint um, a wall on the side of a restaurant, which was really, really cool. Um, and this summer, actually, I just finished a mural at our library on the window of the teen area. So hopefully adding in a little bit more color and inspiring people to read, maybe. Um, and I've also done a few small projects inside too that I just thought were really interesting and fun. Um, so in my sophomore year, I started painting shoes and customizing shoes for customers. So I think I've customized a little more than a hundred so far, but it's basically been a really interesting experience because not only did I experience what it's like to actually earn your own money, but you also have to learn how to talk to people and learn how to negotiate. You have to learn how to actually work with clients and make sure your clients are happy and make sure that everyone's on the same page. So it's definitely um, a very good experience to have when you're in high school is to maybe try to start your own business and see how the logistics of that actually work out. Um, and something else I did in my freshman year was just for fun, I really love the story of Alice in Wonderland. And the deck of cards tell the story of Alice in Wonderland. So I put a small picture of it on the slide, but it's basically every single card has um, a picture that I drew, and the picture corresponds to like a character or an event that happens in Alice in Wonderland. Um, yeah, and then moving on to a lot of the questions that you guys requested about um, how to foster passion, self drive, time management, and sleep. Um, I put a lot of advice. Uh, from the Stripe founder, Patrick Collison on the slide, since I think he might be a little bit more qualified than I am to talk about these things since he's actually achieved a very high level of success in his life. But I think a lot of this advice really resonated with me. So hopefully if you share it with your kids, it'll resonate with them too. And it'll really help them understand that inner drive is exactly that. It comes from inside of you and you need to find what you want to pursue in life. Um, so I'll go over all these bullet points really quickly but you guys can read them too. So I think uh, the first one is extremely important since from the period of 10 to 20, your brain is a prime stage of development. Like this is a stage where your brain is so absorbent that you wanna learn as many new things as you can. Um, so you wanna find the things that interest you and then go really deep on them. Um, read books, look at the people who have succeeded in that field and learn from them. Um, and you really wanna become an expert on anything that you're interested in. Um, and I think the second point is also really important because uh, he says that one of the main things that you want to try to achieve by age 20 is some sense for which kind of things you enjoy doing, because this is actually not really going to change throughout your life. So 
Um, high school is really like a playground where you can explore a lot of different things, join a lot of different clubs and find out what you really like to do, because that is likely going to be something that you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Um, and the third point uh, really resonated with me since I chose, I suppose, a more unconventional path at Harker, since most people at Harker are really focused on STEM aspects, but I really like art and humanities. Um, you don't really need to focus too much about how valuable, quote unquote, the things that you're pursuing are. Like for instance, a lot of people might not find pursuing art valuable because maybe you won't be able to be financially secure later on in life. But I think for me personally, it was very valuable because since I like doing it so much, I learned a lot of really important lessons from doing it. And it also opened up a lot of opportunities for me that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, and then the fourth point is one of the most important is to aim to read a lot. And I think that's also what really helped me since I know that when we're in lower school, we're really encouraged to read like fantasy books, fiction books, but slowly as we reach middle school and high school, like maybe we start playing computer games more, we start watching YouTube more. And I think we really stop reading, which is a very dangerous thing. Um, I guess personally for me, reading has actually been not just reading in class or reading outside of class has helped me learn a lot. Um, anything from reading memoirs of like famous people, successful people, or memoirs of just anyone who's written a very good book, um, reading about Zen Buddhism, reading classics, fiction, anything that interests you, um, it's really good idea to read. And another a suggestion that I have is definitely to take notes or write some sort of reflection while you read. Like for me, I love writing down quotes that really resonate with me. And after I read a book, I try to write myself a review of it so I can go through it and really understand what I've learned from that book. So I'm not just wasting my time reading, I guess. Um, and I really like this quote by Edmund Burke that says, reading without reflecting is like eating without digesting. So if you don't reflect on what you read, it's really just gonna slip out of your brain and fall away. But when you reflect on something, that's when you actually learn. So it's really good. Um, and the last two bullet points I tried to put in bold because those were the two that really resonated with me the most out of all of these, even though all of these are really important. Um, to the extent that you enjoy working hard, do. And if you're lucky enough to enjoy it a lot, be grateful and take full advantage. Um, because I think something that Alina mentioned too is a deep interest in a specific topic makes people work harder than any amount of discipline can. So you really need to find things that interest you the most because that's like, I guess like a, a cheat path to hard work because when you're actually interested in something, then you're a lot more likely to work hard in it and be self-driven. Um, and I think something else important to touch on that Alina also touched on and Clarice too, is you have to figure out how to work hard without burning out. Um, so you definitely need to learn how to take breaks and how to set aside time for yourself, how to manage your time and schedule like maybe a few hours every night to do what you really like to do and to take a break from all of your academic work. Um, and then the last uh, bullet point I included since I've also thought it was really interesting is that people who did great things often did so at surprisingly young ages and they were gray haired when they became famous but not when they actually did the work. So hurry up, you can do great things. And I think that's something that's really important especially in the Bay Area, this kind of mindset that we have is like once you get to college that's when your life really starts. But I think what we maybe would do better realizing is like your life already started and you have all this time, you have all these resources. It's easier than ever to learn whatever you want since libraries are free. There's so much free information online that you can learn from. So really um, the time from when you're 10 to when you're 20 um, in high school, especially is the time to pursue what you're really interested in and try to find opportunities and try to actually get real world experience and just make things and don't worry about failing because what you do now, you're probably not going to remember in 30 years. Um, yeah, and then just some final things to touch on in terms of how to manage my time and how do I um, get enough sleep. So for me, it's really useful to just have a daily to-do list of tasks that I need to do. So whenever I find something that I need to do, I'll write it down immediately. Since I know that with my brain, I'll probably forget it later on. So I need to write down every single thing that I need to do. And then it's just really satisfying for me personally to go and check things off as I do them. So to make sure that I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, and in terms of sleep, I have to admit, to be realistic, like Alina said, it's very hard to get eight hours of sleep every single day in high school. Um, so for me, what works best is maybe during the school week, I'll sacrifice my sleep a little bit to do some work. But over the weekend is when I really can catch up on sleep. So overall, it evens out and it's still 
a he healthy amount of sleep. Um, and finally, in terms of stress, like Alina mentioned, it's really good to set aside time every single day to reflect. And for me, what, what that is, is just writing in a journal every single day. Um, and writing is really interesting since, um, like Alina mentioned, I think when you write down something, it's kind of like you can explore your thoughts and you kind of release the stress that you're feeling or whatever you're feeling. You can funnel that into the page and then um, something else interesting about keeping a journal is that later on you can look back and see how much you've grown. Like I can look back on my journal from freshman year and see how much I've changed since then and how much I've learned. Yeah, um, I think that's all I have for my presentation. Thank you guys so much for listening. Okay, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, I don't think we have any specific questions for Michelle in the chat, so let's move on to our next speaker, Zubin. All right, hi there. Um, my name my name is Zubin Kara. I am in the grade, um, I'm the class of 23. I'm a rising junior, which means I'm in the class below Alina, Michelle, and uh, Clarice. Um, so I guess let's start with some of my extracurriculars that I do during this school year. Um, my three main things that I focus on are student leadership, speech and debate, and performing arts. Uh, so first of all, student leadership. Um, in middle school, I didn't. I wasn't really a confident person. I would say I, was, I usually had like a very reserved set of friends. I was more... Um, I guess more shy. Um, however, in ninth grade, I sort of ran on a whim and I happened to win because I put in a lot of like extra work into it. Um, and it's been an amazing experience so far. I think uh, in ninth grade, uh, ninth grade, I put in, since we were in person for most of that year, it was a little bit more intense than 10th, 10th grade. Um, I'd say I probably put in uh, eight, eight or so hours of work a week. Um, however, in 10th grade, um, they opened up a new position called the Student Activity Board, which basically split apart Student Council and um, Spirit. So, and Spirit is like basically um, all the fun activities that school has, uh, has opportunities for. Uh, so we, we basically get to run those. So I was the, um, one of the three coordinators for our grade. And I'll be again on the Student Activity Board next year. And um, over Zoom, it was usually about five to six hours a week, but uh, in person, I'm sure it'll pick up, especially during the Spirit Weeks, which are these big week-long events which we have, which uh, the whole community gathers together, and it's honestly known as like one of the most fun times during the school year. Um, next year, I'll also be the events committee lead, which basically organizes all the main events in the year, um, which will be really exciting. Um, next um, is speech and debate. So um, I've been on speech and debate since sixth grade, um, I've tried out every single speech event at this point, and it honestly started because my mom wanted me to break out of that comfort zone, and originally, I would say in sixth grade, it was more of like I was unwilling to do it. I maybe went to like one or two tournaments, and I didn't really have that much fun, but as I began developing closer relationships with my team members, as well as my teachers, um, I really began to enjoy it, especially the traveling experience, because you get to network and find so many people across the across the nation that are so passionate about speech and debate, and it's really interesting. Um, I've been a finalist at the Middle School TOC, and I have had uh, placements at a few notable tournaments such as Berkeley and Glenbrook. Um, and I'll be continuing next year and the year after that for sure. Um, and then finally, um, in my three main ones, uh, is performing arts. I do something called the Certificate Program uh, with an emphasis in acting. Uh, the Certificate Program is for people who want to uh, pursue um, some aspect of the arts in, um, later on in life or in some capacity. I know for a fact that I'm not going to be pursuing it full time per se, but it's still something that I would deeply be interested in even after I get out of college. And that's why I pursue the certificate program. You just have to complete a set of a bunch of set requirements and they'll give you a certificate at the end that proves that you've done all this stuff. And it's very um, prestigious, I would say. Uh, and my emphasis in acting, I do a lot of fall plays, a lot of um, spring musicals, and a lot of the student-directed showcase performances, where I've had numerous lead roles, and those are honestly so so broad and diverse, and I really enjoy it. Um, even if you aren't into theater, th there are so many different um, aspects of it that even the most reserved people can get into. There's technical theater, there's pop and set design, there's... Um, dance, there's um, all sorts of things. I could go on for ages. I could go on for ages. Um, I don't do any volunteering currently, but um, I figured it's something that's very important that I feel like should be mentioned because volunteering is a very important aspect of high school. I used to work with a company, I mean, with a nonprofit called Connecting Futures Now, um, which basically connects tutors, tutors who under underprivileged 
children. So I got to work with a brother and sister to help them. And I helped them with American history as well as um, basic mathematical concepts. Um, and then some other notable things, which um, I will be doing next year or I have done, which I didn't get to put on this list, are I'm a member on the Youth Activism Club. Um, I will be joining the outlet as a marketing, as um, potentially marketing um, in a marketing position. And um, I'm blanking, but there are a few more. Um, okay. And then uh, for summer, well, uh, this summer I tried to keep myself as busy as possible. Um, I fell into that kind of quarantine rut last year where I didn't really know what to do with myself. And I knew for a fact that I couldn't let that happen and this opportunity slide away this year. So um, I ended up doing four main things. One, um, I just finished today the Lehigh Iacocca Entrepreneurship Intensive, which is a four week long program. Uh, it's a virtual, but if it was in person, I would be in New York right now uh, at Lehigh University. And basically we learn about all aspects of entrepreneurship as well as um, we get to work with the client um, and we get to provide them suggestions. So we got to work with this um, construction, for, construction consulting firm and we gave them uh, product design and marketing tips. And that was really amazing because um, they took a lot of our feedback to heart. And um, it's a really uh, amazing program where you create a lot of interesting bonds with people. Um, next, my second biggest thing that I'm, uh, that I'm doing this summer is um, with this startup called SpikeView. SpikeView is this um, company that, um, I guess you could describe it as a LinkedIn, but geared towards teenagers. Um, it's instead of resumes that you're creating, you're creating portfolios for teenagers. And you're long, and it, it has like a feed aspect to it where you can find all sorts of uh, internships and opportunities and amazing um, extracurriculars anyone can find. And I'm working as a community management manager, uh, which means I'm trying to just get as many people out and into this um, into this platform as possible. Um, I do. I've reached out to the performing arts program at school. I've helped out. I've even spoke to Harker Decca as well as um, the California DECA branch, uh, lots of notable, um, lots of notable uh, places that they've partnered up with, including Ivy League schools. Um, next, I have been working with the Janani Ramachandran campaign. Janani is a, uh, she's running for the state assembly this year. So I'm helping her out with her campaign. I currently have a phone banking position um, where I help her out. I'm an intern there where I help out with um, phone banking as well as just getting the message across as well as attending her events and um, going door to door canvassing from time to time. Uh, although it seems to be a little bit more lackluster and a little bit boring at times, it definitely brings out uh, aspect as a, sort of, I guess, a theme that a lot of Harker that a lot of Harker and high school kids follow. That um, you're interested in politics, which I deeply am. I deeply enjoy politics and public speaking, which is why I wanted to pursue this in hope that maybe next year I can work with a politician in a better role, hopefully. Um, and finally, I'm working with an uh, investment firm called Navy Capital. Um, this internship is yet to start, has yet to start. However, I will be doing uh, research and um, hopefully from this experience, I can produce a paper, uh, some research paper on it. Um, yeah. So I guess let me move on to the questions. Um, um, what ex no, I said that. Um, how do you manage your time, time management? Are you able to get enough sleep and stress? So I guess. I guess those all go hand in hand in some way. Um, I guess my sleep is impacted by my stress a lot of the time. Um, I guess that's a pretty obvious statement, but um, there are definitely times in the school year where a lot of these activities ramp up, such as student leadership ramps up when you have events coming up, like the homecoming dance or the homecoming football game, where you need a lot of stuff um, to prepare. Um, but finding that perfect balance, uh, whether it can be to just hobbies or your social life or like meeting up with friends. These are real stress busters that help you out so much. And I can't stress the, I can't emphasize as much as possible. Uh, finding people around you who can take that stress away from you and um, like keeping your kids, I keeping your children, uh, although it is important to have extracurriculars, I think it's just as important to have a social life at high school, uh, making sure you maintain that as much as possible is just as productive because it definitely keeps you motivated not i don't mean this in like a in a weird way but it's your friends are sort of your friendly competitors in a way like you want to keep up with them and you want to work with them 
Um, so it's definitely one wonderful to have a set group of friends that you can work with. Um, and I think that helped me so much throughout high school. Um, I don't, I don't currently, I don't get enough sleep. Um, I'm susceptible to that because I sleep roughly at two. I mean, not two, sorry, <laughs> 12, 12, um, uh, midnight. And I have to wake up at 6.30 for the program, but um, because it's based on the East Coast. However, the program has just ended. So I'll be catching up on sleep, much needed sleep. Um, thank God. Um, and during the school year, I do get seven to eight hours of sleep a day, uh, which is, I'm very grateful for that. Um, and what else? How did you become self-driven in academics? And did my parents do anything to foster that? So I definitely say that my mom and dad were big motivators in a lot of the things. Um, I definitely say that they introduced me to a lot of these concepts because we had family friends that were doing them originally. And from them, I sort of grew the, grew the knack or I found, oh, I actually enjoy this or, oh, I'm sort of good at this. Maybe I should continue doing it. Um, and that's what, I, that's why I chose these, these three specific things to focus on, student leadership, speech and debate, and performing arts, because I deeply do enjoy them, and I love that public speaking app, how I can just speak freely in all of these things, and you don't find that very much. Um, and I think I definitely agree with what a lot of the other speakers were saying, how um, the best thing a parent can do is, one, give your child some space when they need it, and two, um, providing them with as many opportunities and resources and suggestions as possible that helped me so much through high school. My mom is like uh, constantly browsing through her LinkedIn page and all these sorts of other things, uh, which has been so helpful. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Zubin. Um, so we have a question for you. How did you get the investment firm internship? Is there a process to find such opportunities? Well, um, so that one was actually based off of a family friend of ours who, um, he's the lead market researcher at the investment firm. However, the Spike View community management intern, that one, um, I actually began using Spike View before I was an intern there. And because it's such a valuable tool, I would definitely look into it if I was you. It's such a useful tool to find opportunities near you. It's sort of, as I just said, it's a LinkedIn, essentially, but geared towards a much younger audience, such as high schoolers. Um, and it just helps you out so much. And that's how I, they said that they were looking for hiring. Uh, and LinkedIn honestly helped me find the Janani Ramachandran campaign. So I guess it, I mean, sorry, not LinkedIn, Spike you helped me find the Janani Ramachandran campaign. So it all sort of linked together for me. And I figured, you know, if they've helped me out so much, I figured that um, I should definitely try to help them out. Cause, and on top of that, I'm interested in starting my own startup in the near future. Um, I will be taking the incubator class next year. So hopefully I can learn a thing or two, which I definitely have been. Okay, great. Um, so now we'll move on to our last speaker, Jessica. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Jessica and I'm in the same grade as Zubin. Uh, so I probably won't be speaking as much, but um, since the previous speakers have covered a lot of really great information. Uh, for me, my main school uh, curriculars are speech, um, golf, IOF, HOSA, and um, medical club. So with speech, um, this is actually, I feel like a big part of who I am. So I've always enjoyed like kind of speaking in front of people and just talking to different people. Um, but you know, I, I have been doing debate for like a few years, but in, when I, in ninth grade, when I joined the debate team, I just wasn't really happy. Like, I didn't feel like I enjoyed it. I didn't feel like I was doing really well. And so it wasn't really, you know, the best thing, even though my parents really actually kind of like really liked debate and didn't really know too much about speech. Um, however, so in 10th grade, I decided to switch to speech from debate. And I feel like I'm, so happy I made that decision because I personally just enjoy speech so much more than I think I ever would have enjoyed debate and um you know my parents didn't really know too much about it and uh they kind of were like a little confused at why I did that but I told them that you know this was I felt more comfortable when doing speeches than debate and you know they agreed and so that's why like um even though uh, I, like you know, this past season, um, I worked to Octos at Stanford and uh, MLK, and uh, same with Zubin, um, we both, um, you know, we're uh, speech team captains uh, for the next year. And so, 
Uh, for yeah, so I see a question for sports. Um, I do varsity golf, varsity girls golf, and uh, this year we were CCS champions. And uh, in 2019, since we didn't have a season 2020, uh, 2019 we actually got to all the way up to NorCal's, which was quite an accomplishment. And um, with uh, with varsity golf, this is where and any sports for that matter varsity or not there is a major time commitment that you need to be aware of and as a lot of advice that has been passed down you're not going to be you're not going to reach like your full potential if this is not what you enjoy doing I did not enjoy golf when I was younger and I didn't play as well but you know after joining the school team um with all my teammates there and supporting me, I really started to enjoy the sport and my game actually did get better. You know, we won CCS this year. And so um, the part what golf attracts me is that it's, it can be both an individual and a team sport. Individuals that when you're on course, you're playing with yourself, you're playing against yourself. But if you're playing on a school team, even though you might be playing against yourself, every score will count because in a team of the six of the varsity team, five score, the lowest five scores will be count, counted, right? So you never know when maybe one of your teammates is having a bad day, you might need to cover for them. So here's what I learned. You need to be able to like always be there for your team members and whether or not you think you need to be or not. Um, and so that's what really makes me feel like, that's why I really enjoy it because um, it's such like a mix of things. And honestly, for me now, it's actually really relaxing for me after like maybe a long time on the computer if I go play on course and it feels really nice. Um, uh, and obviously it takes a lot of practice. And so that's maybe why some people may not like it as much, but um, in general sports, especially in season have taken up has taken up like a good amount of my time. So I learned time management very fast, like how to make sure everything is correct. Um, and yeah, so that's on golf. Uh, International Ally Foundation here has brought you this presentation. I am co-president of it. And um, honestly, I enjoy it a lot. So for me, I have been spending a lot of time on it and helping like coordinate fundraisers and expansion now to Hong Kong, Korea and the Philippines. If anyone is interested, you know, contact us. Um, but uh, so um, here in this club, you know, as Victoria has already mentioned, we aim to kind of just connect youth across the world. And for me, I moved to the US two years ago from Hong Kong, and I actually kind of got a bit of a culture shock. And from there, I realized, oh, I was actually really interested in the differences in culture from uh, all the different places around the world, and which is why I thought IOF was just the perfect um, place club for me to be an organization for me to try to contribute as much as I could to um and you know now I'm working on like new uh, collaboration programs with other students um uh and another one of my interests as Alina mentioned you kind of have like a theme in all your extracurriculars for me it's culture and uh medicine and health so um, I'm, I've always been interested in like that kind of things. And so this year I participated in the HOSA competition, which is like uh, a kind of like DECA, but for um, future healthcare professionals or students who are interested in healthcare and medicine. And we, we qualified for regionals, we placed second in California, and we actually managed to be able to compete at the International Leadership Conference, which was a huge experience for us because it was our first year doing it. And so it was really fun to do. and. Uh, starting next year I will be a transition officer on the medical club which um, I'm really looking forward to and uh, for me I think everything together combined um, is something I just everything here is something I personally enjoy doing and I would never have done if if I didn't enjoy because I, I know I wouldn't have done a good job and I wouldn't have spent as much time on it um, because I, maybe I just wasn't into it. So with like, you know, my interest with culture and healthcare, you know, global health, this is things I wanna do. And so in the summer, um, I'm doing the UCSC SIP research program. And, um, and uh, for this one, I'm doing psychology and looking at how like social justice values and communal values play an impact in research. And uh, it's kind of like what I'm interested in, like how like different, maybe how the ways different people uh, can be affected in these things. And uh, as well as just pre-studying for the school year. Um, 
And so I guess going into like, so these are kind of like the extracurriculars um, I am into. And again, you know, my parents, even though they didn't really understand why I wanted to switch at, like to speech in the first place, um, you know, they were still, they saw that I was happy. They saw I had better results um, in speech and which is why, you know, I feel like that's really important. And with managing time, as I mentioned with golf, it's extremely important that, you know, do whatever it feels best for you, whether it be using like Google calendars, maybe writing something down or having like a board up somewhere, whatever like works best for you. Um, but I think one advice I'd like to give is just write down every single thing. Like if it's somebody mentions to you, like at this time, write it down so you will not forget. And um, and with sleep, I, I think um, I'm doing not too bad on the sleep schedule. I have a pretty solid one, but sometimes um, if things do ramp up, like especially in season where I need to balance homework and golf, then um, maybe I don't get as much sleep as I should be. And uh, to cope with stress, I think one thing is that parents, you should allow your child to find at least one thing, just one hobby that has nothing to do with their academic life, just something completely that just they find enjoyment and maybe put aside at least like one hour for it every week. Just this one hour to just like forget about every like all the academic things and just this one like completely just their own self interest thing just so as like a kind of like relaxation and just completely like letting themselves let loose for that hour before like heading back into like the hard kind of keeping up with everything else in their life. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Um, we have a question for you. So. Can you talk more about the difference between speech and debate and what characteristics might fit better in debate and speech respectively? Yeah, of course. So for me, um, I did, I've done debate. I did debate. There's many different types of debate and there's many different uh, areas in speech you can do it. In debate, I used to do world schools and I got to Harker. I did public forum, both are pretty similar. And with debate, uh, you will almost always have a team member with you. Um, whereas in speech, you are on your own. So one of the major things why I didn't feel comfortable in debate was because I was new to public forum and I didn't feel like I understood it as well. And so I continuously felt bad. I was like dragging down my partner. And so I think with debate, um, I think somebody told me once, it's a lot of mental gymnastics. You need to be able to kind of analyze your opponent's speech and be able to um, kind of come up with a rebuttal that not only like works against what they're speaking about, um, but also kind of like why they're wrong and how them being wrong will help your point. Alina might be able to talk a little more on this since she does more uh, debate. Um, with speech, what I found is that even though it's by yourself, it's, some, it's like a complete different like set of thought processes you need to use. With debate, it's more kind of technical and looking exactly what they've said. With speech, depending on what topic you're doing, whether it's like original, like prepared events, it's more creative being able to say whatever like is important to you. If it's impromptu, how creative can you get and how like concise can you get with all the different examples that proves like a completely random like prompt that you get. With an extemp and speech, which is if you have international or US, you speak on like global or US issues. And for that, I think you need to be able to like articulate what is going on and the planet like right now, whether it be politically, socially, economically, and um, versus like in debate, you have like just this one topic for a set amount of time. So I feel like for me in speech, I got to explore more and I got to like try a lot more different styles of speaking, whereas debate felt a lot more kind of set in place. And so it depends on what kind of person you are and uh, what type of speaking do you enjoy? like debate you know you're you have two teams on stage with speech you're speaking to the audience you're trying to like, tell a story to the audience it's how I kind of categorize the two I hope that helps um okay thank you um for that Jessica and we'll be moving on to the Q&A session shortly so first um thank you all for listening and remember if you'd like to support IOF please visit our website just right here uh, to make a donation if you'd like, and we hope you enjoyed the presentation. So now we'll be moving into Q&A, um, and speakers, feel free to jump in if, you, if there's a question that you'd like to answer. 
So our first question is, do you have counselors outside of school? Does it help? Okay, I guess I can start to answer that question and anyone else can join in. So yes, personally, I did uh, start having a counselor in junior year. And I think that really does help because the counselor has a lot more experience than you since they've been through the college application process like 10 times or at least many more times that you've been. So if anything, it just helps you feel a lot more secure and that you're doing the right things, that you're on track, that you're on schedule to do everything successfully since um, they'll really help you with your research and also with pacing your essays. And um, it's also really helpful for them to give feedback on your essays and how to improve your writing. Um, so that's what I found most helpful about having a college counselor. I could quickly jump on that question. Um, I had my college counselor starting from near the end of middle school. Um, so I've been with the same person and company for uh, throughout my high school years. And I think what's really helped me is that my counselor now knows like a complete profile of me from updates from every year of my high school life. And sometimes when we're meeting and say we're discussing like college application questions, she's like, oh, didn't you do this? And I'm like, oh yeah, I could talk about this in my application as well. So getting to know your counselor and having them know you is a very good um, or like a good thing to have uh, going into college, college counseling. Would anyone else like to answer? Um, okay, if not, then Michelle, we have a question for you. So how did you go about learning art? Are there any places you would recommend? When did you start learning art? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I think for me, it started with just like drawing Disney characters when I was like maybe three or four. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but I've been really lucky since my parents have been really supportive. And I think that's something that all of us kind of touched on, but it's really amazing when you actually support what your child is interested in, even when like maybe traditionally, like it wouldn't be considered valuable by society, especially in the Bay Area. Um, but in terms of art, um, my mom started um, taking me to art classes. Like I started doing like um, art classes at the community center, but recently um, I think an art class that I really recommend is Visionary Art. Um, and I can put that in the chat right now. And also um, art classes by Lee Akamichi. Um, I'll try to find their website really fast too, and then you can go check it out. And, um, Lee Akamichi, he's more with like sculpture or more theoretical art. It's not skill based, but more like you're trying to come up with an idea and then you want to represent your idea, whether that's through like sculpture, whether that's through photography, video. But it's really interesting since you get to really explore how to make a thought manifest in a physical form as an artwork. Yeah, I'll find that really fast. Um, okay, so our next question is, how do you start hard work, stay diligent, and not give up with the fear of stress? And this is a general question. Um, I think that all of us touched on this a bit. So like the only way that you can actually keep being diligent and keep being motivated, even though you are overwhelmed and stressed by work, is if you're truly like passionate about what you're doing. Like Michelle really, really loves art and she's super accomplished at art because she's so interested in it. Um, in like a similar vein, the only reason I'm able to be motivated, um, even over the summer when I guess we're supposed to be having fun, um, while I'm doing like two research projects at once is because I actually really do like um, doing both humanities research and I'm pretty interested in um, science research as well. So um, I guess like learning not to give up is kind of like a process. I don't think there's a specific tip that I'm able to give you. You just have to learn as you're like putting more projects into your schedule. Like as you progress through high school, it's something that you just keep learning and adding on to your own abilities so yeah so try a lot of different methods that you think would suit you for like stress management and time management and see what happens from there and don't give up and also forgive yourself if you do um give up <laughs> yeah 
I second everything Alina just said. I'd also like to emphasize the point Zubin brought up earlier, um, the importance of having a solid social life. Um, talking to people is a really great way, for me at least, and I'm, I'm sure for other people, to alleviate your stress. Um, it could be your parents, your friends, anything, as long as you have someone to talk to um, and just ground yourself and really look back on what you're doing. It could be day by day or weekly or monthly. It could be anything, but um, yeah, I really think that would help as well. Okay, um, our next question is, how did your parents help you find your interests? Have you had any conflict with your parents in some decisions? If so, how, how did you deal with that conflict? Could you share any failure or mistakes? Yeah, I can talk about that. Um, when my parents are suggesting things that I could possibly do, like art, writing, research, other types of stuff, we did have um, a few arguments because I'll give you one example. I talked about it before. Um, I hate math competitions and they kind of made me prepare for it a little bit. Um, which led to a lot of conflict. But eventually um, they realized that if I don't like doing something and I'm really not interested in doing it, then I won't do a really good job. So I think it's about achieving that balance. Like some things are probably necessary that your parents like push you to do something like maybe SAT or ACT prep. That's understandable if they like force you to do a little bit prep because it's pretty like valid and you need to do well for college, I guess. Um, but Things like math, like other than standardized testing, like I hate math. If I don't like doing it, they won't force me to do it. And I think it's just achieving that balance of like knowing what's important to you and also what interests you and yeah, stuff like that. Um, I think the best thing a parent can do is just give you a bunch of resources and opportunities that you can pick and choose from and see what you want to stick with. But definitely not forcing anything onto your student is best, yeah. Um, and we have a pretty similar question to that to follow up. So how do you deal with disagreement with your parents or when you feel like your parents don't understand you well? And how do you deal with your parents when they seem to ask too much, especially when they did not go through high school here and they might not understand um, your experience? Um, I feel like one important thing to note is that a lot of parents may have preconceived ideas of what is successful and what isn't, or like only very specific things will do well and others won't. And like, just take this with a grain of salt, but like not, there are so many other things that can still like work to who you are. If it fits into like who you want to be as a profile or who like your theme, then there's so many things you can do. And it doesn't have to be like specific, like Alina said, it doesn't, if you're like interested in science, doesn't mean you have to only win science competitions and do like the Olympiads. That's not what it means. Like there is a lot of other things you could do that maybe like, for example, if you do kind of like um, a more social aspect, maybe like um, reaching out to students who do not have as much resources in science as you do and you could help them or um, taking more of our like maybe discussing like doing something with like many other students across like the world who are interested in science and maybe it's discussing like what's going on and like maybe controversies and stuff there are many things that you could do um and uh if like sorry I did have a minor disagreement with my parents about like debate and speech because they didn't know what speech was they thought that only debate was like quote unquote useful and so like but then so how I kind of like dealt with it, I guess you might say, is that like I explained to them the differences between the two and why I personally felt that I would even just do better if they were looking, because they were looking for results, right? But I knew that I would do better there. Um, and so I think one important thing is communication. Whether or not you agree with your parents or not, you have to like communicate with them, like why you want to do this, why it's important to you and listen to them too. Like maybe listen to them, why they have worries about what you are doing instead. Um, and kind of explain. I think maybe that might also kind of deal with like, oh, what if they, they didn't go through high school here? Like explain to them, like, you know, here is how, what it's like for us here versus like what you've been through there. Okay, awesome. Oh, Michelle, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to add um, to what Jess said, which is really valuable. Um, I think something else for me was, 
Um, I've also had some disagreements with my mother, but I think something that's really important to keep in mind is that the most powerful impact you can have on your child is to lead by example. Like if you're asking them to like do work and work really hard and not go on their phone, if you're going on your phone on WeChat for like three hours a day, then your child is not going to listen to you. So you need to make sure that if you're asking your child to do something, you need to be the best example for them. Yeah, so that's something that I encountered, but thankfully my mom has been a pretty good example for me. So I'm really grateful for that. Awesome. So our next question is, how did you go out of your comfort zone? I can take this question. Um, I believe the best way I, I at least for me, um, the best way that I thought of going out of my comfort zone, uh, it originally wasn't up to me. I think it was a lot of it was a lot of me wanting to do this this thing that was in my comfort zone, and talking to someone and getting a second opinion or a third opinion, or just asking a group of people in general, what do they think about it? And usually, um, I, I think this is a pretty standard idea, but there are a lot of things that you don't see because you are approaching it from what will work best for me or what will I be the most comfortable with, but someone else who's close to you, who knows you well, will obviously be able to tell you truthfully what you need, what's best for you. And for me, that was my mother and my dad um, and my father um, who really, really helped me out uh, pick out what are some aspects of, of my personality that I want to focus on and apply to my school life. Um, and as I said before, in middle school, like, like I was playing like with cards and like I was um, on like computer games 24 seven, you know? And then in ninth grade, I just suddenly ran for student council and happened to win because I put in some work because my parents backed me up. They um, offered to give me great ideas. They helped me out so much and my friends helped me out so much. Um, and easing into becoming part of a group such as student council, such as uh, performing arts, such as even DECA, even something which maybe isn't as like 100% social, um, but more theoretical, um, anything can, or even STEM, you know, anything that involves a group dynamic is perfect for really branching out as much as possible because you get to connect with other people and find out their experiences and you can relate to that. Okay, thank you. Um, Annalena, we have a question for you. So who are your favorite authors? Um, I would say that um, my favorite authors, okay, so I'll separate it into two sections. One section is like people who write in English and then the other section is people who write in Japanese, but you, they have translated books in English. Um, so I like Kate Ch Chopin. Um, I'll actually type these in chat, actually. Um, my three main authors I like are Kate Chopin, Junpa Lahiri, and Dazai Osamu. So Kate Chopin, I love her books. I would highly suggest reading the novella called The Awakening and also her short story, Story of an Hour. And I also like Junpa Lahiri. I like her collection of short stories called interpreter of melodies it's very interesting it talks about like cultural exchange and stuff like that um like the importance of family um relationships and your own culture um and finally my research project for the humanities is actually based on Dazai Osamu um he's a really wonderful author I think I would suggest reading No Longer Human it's the main book I'm researching and The Setting Sun and also his short story called Metamorphosis. I think that Dazai is probably one of my favorite authors ever. Um, he definitely has a lot of self-awareness that I really respect in writers. And he's just really able to articulate his own feelings and emotions so you really develop a really strong bond with the main character, even though they're fictional. Um, and yeah, um, I would definitely check out his work. It's very impactful, thanks. Um, and then our last question for now, um, I think some of our speakers already touched on this, but do you guys do any sports? If yes, which of the sports attract you? If not, is that due to, is it due to you not being interested or not having time? Uh, I could quickly do this and I mentioned it earlier, but um, in my first two years of high school, I was on the track and cross country team for Harker. And um, when it came to the junior and senior year, uh, or sorry, junior year, um, COVID happened and 
we weren't really able to participate in meets um, or comp competitions. And it was hard like getting out everyone at the same place and running at the same time. Um, so I decided to pursue a different sport, uh, which is the reason why I switched to capoeira, which is the martial art I mentioned. Um, and it's a sport option that our school offers uh, that's less frequent actually than uh, more time commitment, heavy sports such as cross country and track. Um, so I think in regards to your question, um, I changed sports because of the COVID situation, but the decision I made in terms of which sport to pursue next was heavily based on my own interests and um, what I wanted to do. Okay. If there are are no more questions. Um, I think that concludes our presentation for today. So thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, we will send out the, the video recording for the parents of uh, the student who had registered. I just shared the register link again. Yeah. Thank you all. <laughs>